Hey everyone, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Here, thank you for joining us in our celebration today, everyone both in person and virtually. Um, we're live streaming from Guide Dogs for the Blind from our California campus. Whether you're enjoying the celebration in person or virtually via live stream, whether it's your first, second, or perhaps 30th graduation, we welcome you. We're so glad that you're joining us today. We're here to celebrate three new breeder dogs and their custodians, as well as four new guide dog teams, as well as applaud the generosity of all of those who have helped make today happen. First off, to our puppy raisers. Thank you so much for helping us prepare these very special dogs for their roles. We literally could not fulfill our mission without you. You put your heart and soul into each dog and it shows. We look forward to hearing from some of you today. To our donors, thank you for helping us provide a lifetime of support for our alums at no cost to them. We do not receive any government funding, so we are very thankful for all of your support. GDB would like to acknowledge Lillian Tremoroli for her generous sponsorship of harnesses throughout the whole year of 2024. <laughs> to our volunteers and employees, thank you for all that you do to support our mission. Whether you help by working with our dogs, in administration, or directly with our clients, we are so grateful for all that you do. I'd like to acknowledge our wonderful nursing staff, the resident advisors, as well as housekeeping and the kitchen staff. Together, you ensure everyone's needs are well taken care of during their two week training away from home. Last but not least, I'd like to call up the instructors and supervisor for this class. They are some of the hardest working people I know and they dedicate a lot of themselves to ensure we have amazing teams that are ready to take on the world after graduation, just like the four that we have sitting in front of us today. So first up, we have Corinne Brown. <laughs> Megan Harris. <laughs> and Guide Dog Program Manager, Melanie Harris. Thanks guys. So we want to share a short video about our mission. This video is audio described. So in addition to the narrator, you're going to hear a second voice that is describing scenes in the video. Captions are also included. These inclusive features ensure everyone can access and enjoy the video. Thanks. Mm -hmm. At Guide Dogs for the Blind, we believe that everyone deserves to move through the world safely and confidently to live the life they want to live. A man and his guide dog walk through a park. Our life-changing programs meet people who are blind or visually impaired wherever they are along their journey, whether that's by matching individuals with highly qualified guide dogs, providing guide dog readiness skills in our orientation and mobility immersion program. A man holds a white cane and smiles broadly or pairing youth and adults with the companionship of a canine buddy. A young girl cuddles with her canine buddy. Together, we are GDB. My name is Rene Carrasco. Uh, my dog's name is Snoopy. Rene sits in front of a fireplace. So the reason that I wanted to get a guide dog was because I came across some videos from Guide Dogs for the Blind and that was my introduction to guide dog travel. Renee and Snoopy walk along a city sidewalk and cross a street at an intersection. What I saw was the, the ease of travel, the speed that the, uh, the guide dog handler would move with. That's what I wanted for myself. Um, and not only that, but it was also the companionship. Renee and Snoopy play with a tug toy outside in the yard. Working with Snoopy uh, has changed my life dramatically because there's so much freedom that comes along with having a guide dog. It's made the hard parts of blindness not so hard. Renee sits next to Snoopy and gives him a pat on the chest. I feel like my outlook on life and the world is so much more positive having Snoopy in my life. My name is Amit Ahuja and my guide dog's name is Tashi. 
I had the opportunity to complete Guide Dogs for the Blind's Orientation and Mobility Immersion Program. Amit stands on a path with his white cane. And not only did it help me learn to navigate my environment more safely using a white cane, it also made me an even more confident guide dog handler. My experience was just fabulous. Amit and his O&M instructor analyze an intersection and cross a city street. We trained in different locations, practiced different skills, worked out a way to analyze a traffic crossing. I think GDB has transformed my life. To say that it's meeting my needs would be an understatement. My name is Ella and this is my canine buddy, Lafferty. Ella sits on the floor of a living room next to a black lab. Lafferty is just so amazing in many ways. He's such a good boy. He brings me so much joy and is one of my best friends. With kids with visual impairments, Ella's mom, Christy McKerney. The struggle is real for social contact. It's hard to make friends sometimes. And with Lafferty, uh, he's an automatic draw for all kids, which is wonderful. Lafferty has totally opened up uh, for Ella new social connections. Back to Ella. I would recommend Canine Buddy News. They're just, they're just really good dogs and they can change a person's life and make it better. All of Guide Dogs for the Blind services are provided free of charge and our work is made possible by the generous support of our donors and volunteers. Renee sits next to Snoopy on the grass in the park. We receive no government funding. This organization has made such a huge impact on my life and the lives of so many countless people and the donors are the ones that make that possible. Close up of Snoopy. Thank you so much. Ella and Lafferty. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Amit and his guide dog Tashi sit on a beach and watch the sunset. Together, we are unstoppable. To learn more about our life-changing programs and to support our work, please visit guidedogs.com or scan the QR code. I have the honor today of introducing some new breeders into our program. So at Guide Dogs for the Blind, we breed Labradors, Goldens, and Lab Golden Crosses. They are specifically selected for excellent temperament, intelligence, and health for our guide dogs and our canine buddies. Once a dog is added into the breeding program, they are placed into a carefully screened, loving, custod loving custodial home within a 50 mile radius of the San Rafael campus. So first up, we have Gladys, a female yellow Labrador retriever raised by Nancy Pruitt of Beaverton, Oregon, Ellie Tallis of Portland, Oregon, and Anne King of Redmond, Redmond Oregon. Her breeder custodians are Bonnie and Bill Gallagly. Um, hello, I'm Ellie Tallis, and I had the pleasure of raising Gladys with my amazing co-raiser, Nancy Pruitt, um, after getting her at, from a puppy starter, Ann King, at five and a half months. Um, she's my second dog, a little less than Nancy's 34 dogs, but I will catch up. Um, and she was the first dog I've ever taken on the challenge of bringing to school with me. So um, it's definitely an adventure. But her sassy and absolutely loving personality instantly caused everyone to fall in love. Um, to the point where I have a friend who's, sorry, <laughs> I have a friend who's not a dog person at all. And she told me, like, Gladys was that one exception. Like, Gladys was her favorite dog she's ever had um, and been around. So, uh, 
yeah, so on the weeks I would bring, I wouldn't bring her to school because she was with Nancy. Um, I would always hear the words, is Gladys coming with you? Where's Gladys at? Where's our girl? So, um, yeah, people just really fell in love with Gladys. And that just shows, like, how wonderful she is as a dog. Um, and I am so excited for her. <laughs> for her next journey as a breeder. Um, and lastly, I want to thank Guide Dogs so much for the Blind for creating such an amazing community of people. Um, Guide Dogs likes to say, uh, raise a puppy, change a life. I saw this little business card when I got started with Guide Dogs. Um, so I like that, just the motto that's always been in my head. And I know that Gladys' contributions to Guide Dogs will change many lives, and she's already changed mine. Um, and I just feel like my life has been so much better uh, from her presence. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, I started raising puppies in 1991 when my daughter asked for a big dog. And we had a little mutt dog that was my son's. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want a big dog. So my mom had heard about guide dogs, and she said, do you only have to have a dog for a year? And I thought, oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, while she was getting uh, going through growing up, she had four puppies, and she had to get one the day that the other one went back to training. And two, two of her dogs graduated, and we actually came to this campus down here, because we're from Oregon. And then, um, as you heard, I kind of got addicted to <laughs> raising puppies. And uh, so she went off to college, and I started raising. And in 1995, they opened the campus in Oregon, so it was a lot easier. We didn't have to drive down here. And today, my co-raiser, Ellie, and I are celebrating Gladys becoming a breeder. She was my 33rd pup, and my friend, Ann King, started her, and she gave her a wonderful start. She already came to us with really good house manners and already house trained, of course. And then um, this is the perfect co-raiser. <laughs> <laughs> she does so many different things. Like, obviously, I don't go to high school. <laughs> and she takes her to different kinds of stores and different kind of outings. She took her swimming in the river, and I do mostly shopping and that kind of thing, you know. So uh, now we are co-raising a little black lab named Mumper who just turned nine months. And I will really miss this girl, <laughs> this one, when she goes off to college. And I highly recommend everybody that's here that doesn't raise puppies to think about it, because it's really life-changing. And uh, I wanted to thank my co-leaders, Beth Rose and Cheryl Richardson, along with our cruise director, Jenny Collins, who helped me out with the club. And we're, we're the Portland West Puppy Raisers. Also, I want to thank all the pu puppy raisers in our club, because they are all fabulous. And they all, besides training their pups, they always are helpful in training the new people that want to raise a puppy in our club. And I want to thank Guide Dogs for the Blind, the most of all. Thank you. Um, I have the privilege of being custodian for Gladys. And she was started by Anne and Randy King, who completely raised our first breeder. So the interconnection is special. And our perfect first breeder has brought us a perfect second one. We look forward. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, our next breeder is Juanita a female black Labrador retriever raised by Heidi Grimditch of Boulder, Colorado, and her, her breeder custodians are Rebecca and Cody Harris. <laughs> 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 
over the side. Now. Yeah. So this is Juanita for today because yesterday she came in heat. <laughs> so we just have to pretend that this beautiful black lab that I raised is right there. Um, Juanita is an amazing puppy. Her sister's here. She's in the back, Janet. And she was always the best dog to do things with because she said, bring it on, whatever it may be, just bring it on. So that's the fun part about Juanita. Um, my family, like yours, has been involved with guide dogs since 1980. And I had a girl, a little girl, who said, I want to raise a guide dog puppy. I went, what? What, what are you talking about? We, we're from Colorado. So she did, and she's, she, and now I'm doing it, just like her. And I will tell you that uh, having these puppies in our lives for a year is awesome. I suggest everybody do it, and over and over and over again, <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. So that's what we do, and it's a, it's a great program, and the puppies are so awesome to have in our lives for that year, even if it's just a year. So, yeah, we're going to do that. And I want to thank my PFM, who is here, because she's the one that wanted to raise it in 1980. <laughs> and so I thank Lauren Grimditch, my PFM, PF, whatever she is, <laughs> and, and my co-leaders in Boulder, Colorado, and all of my raisers and all the people that are dedicating time and effort to bring these puppies forward. It's just wonderful. And thank you to Guide Dogs for the support that they give us. And the, uh, I mean, really, they give us a lot of support. It's often behind the lines, but it's there. So thank you, everybody. And, and thank to the breeding department, of which Juanita now is going to contribute for these wonderful dogs that are so forward going and they also are so loving. So, thank you, everybody. All right, next up we have Nitro, a male black Labrador retriever raised by Cynthia Money of Danville, California, and Michael and Devin Jones of Danville, California. Her breeder custodians are Cynthia, uh, Cynthia Money, um, it's money. <laughs> um, well, it's kind of the holy grail of puppy raising to actually raise a dog that's become a breeder and be able to be their breeder custodian. And we were lucky enough to also raise Nitro's Uncle Jeter, so that was really fun. And when we picked him up, and his name was Nitro, and he was on the breeder watch list, we thought, ah, this could actually happen. Um, I want to personally thank our, our club, Danville Guide Dog Puppy Racers, all of their support, everybody involved in it is just amazing and wonderful. Along with the breeding, foster care, the vet group, all of that is fantastic. But I want to do a special shout out to somebody in our puppy club that I heard is actually live streaming the, the graduation and she's kind of my hero. Um, this is being watched in Israel and I want to thank Noah Ohad for watching and I want her to come home safely, to come home quickly and to come home and raise a nitro puppy. Hi, I'm Michael Jones. My daughter, Devin, is one of the co-raisers. Uh, she's a freshman at Berkeley. Today is Cal Day at Berkeley, which is kind of a really big deal, so pick the perfect day that she can't make it. Um, also my birthday, by the way, so everybody give me a nice big happy birthday. Thank you. Um, when we first got Nitro, you know, I have a, I'm chronically have a problem when I hear the name for the first time. I seem to never like the name. And by the time this dog goes back, I can't think of this dog any other way. We get Nitro and I'm like, he's named after an American gladiator. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. And for a while, you know, he was that gladiator. Um, he's a full rambunctious boy. Um, but he also was excelling at, um, at his training. And 
we really thought he was going to become a guide. Um, he, he has all the tools to do everything, obviously. Um, and some of those tools, since they were left intact, <laughs> <laughs> meant that uh, that was a real possibility. Um, you know, it, we had a great time raising him. He's my fifth puppy. Um, we raised him since he was, I think we got him at nine weeks, eight weeks. Eight weeks. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's a phenomenal turn of life when you get them when they're so small and you do everything with them every moment and then you see them go back and then you see them excel and, and turn more things into benefits for other people's lives. It's, it's just a great program. Um, as Cindy took a lot of my thunder, she thanked a lot of the people I was going to thank. You know, our club, Danville Club, so much support, so much guidance. Sometimes, you know, they're your therapy club. <laughs> Sometimes they're just your, your buddies. Sometimes they're your drinking buddies. Um, we're fortunate that our club is so wonderful. We have, um, we have working guides. We have retired guides. We have breeders. We have lots of puppies. Sometimes we have foster dogs and we have career change dogs. And it, I think that makes it really, it's a, it's a full circle of life just in that one room. Um, and, you know, I just want to also give a shout out to the unheralded foster people here. Um, I used to be a foster before I was a puppy raiser. The fosters do so much great work, so much going on behind the scenes, and so many people never really see it or, or get to understand what they're doing. Um, and they're fantastic people. So whenever you get a chance, make sure you give a, a good shout out to the Fosters. All right, thank you to all the raisers and the custodians today. Next, I'm gonna bring up Megan to announce the graduating members of class 1001. All right, I get the honor of introducing our guide dog teams. As many of you may know, our guide dog program is a two-week program where clients are matched with a dog that is compatible with their lifestyle to enhance their mobility. We provide a variety of training models that include both in-residence and in-home training. So let's get started with some of our clients. First off, I'm going to invite Howard Cook of Clovis, California, receiving Marco, a male yellow Labrador retriever, raised by Jenna Reimer, and Kathleen Mitchell of San Luis Obispo, and Carrie Wilterding of Dunlap, California. Howard Cook is from Clovis, California, and Marco is his first guide. HC is a retired airport executive, but prior to the airport profession, he served for 10 years in the United States Air Force. He is a... <laughs> He is a Vietnam veteran and continues to serve our veteran population as an honor guard. He plans to take Marco to occasional veteran services. Thank you, Megan. I am so internally grateful to GDB and the donors for the miraculous gift I've got in Marco. The other day, I received a call from my daughter, and she saw him for the first time, and she said, Dad, my thought was, he's your new eyes. I love him. <laughs> the time here, the two weeks, have been wonderful, and I'd like to express my appreciation and gratitude to Megan and Lauren, my instructors, Elisa, Marco's trainer, uh, uh, <laughs> oh boy, I'm lost for our name, <laughs> Melanie, who is the program director, uh, Julie and Kathy, who are the nurses and have taken care of us, Danny and Eric, who served us miraculous meals. Uh, the, all the RAs that were here, they were all wonderful. 
and helped us so much. I also want to thank housekeeping for keeping our rooms so nice and clean. <laughs> and last but not least, I want to thank Carrie here for the love she provided to Marco during his fun re his uh, puppy raising. My plan in the next year is to take Marco with me on a veteran's honor flight to Washington, D.C. I would like to express my appreciation to all of you for attending and those that are watching on YouTube. Thank you. Hi, we're the Wilterding family. I'm Carrie. This is Wesley, Mackenzie, and Matt. Um, Marco is our eighth puppy. Um, you know, they say it takes a village to raise children. It takes a community to raise puppies. Um, Marco, told I wasn't going to cry. <laughs> Marco has always been a very special boy. Um, from his boundless energy <laughs> to his uh, serious working energy to his cuddling on the couch with the kids, uh, hanging out at home. We always knew that he needed us and we needed him. Uh, there are a few people who have made a huge impact on Marco's life. Uh, Mary Flynn for all of our late night conversations. Erin for helping us realize the potential Marco had. Elia and her mom for being the best puppy sitters and cheer team for Marco. All of our friends in the Fresno Pumpy Club, as well as our families that support us. Marco, affectionately known as Marco Polo, or Polo Polo Boy. Um, he will be missed, but we know that Howard will take really good care of him and that he is in loving hands. Thank you. All right, next up we have Craig Hansen of Stillwater, Minnesota, receiving Trusty, a male yellow Labrador, raised by Brant and Nikki Giacomini of Petaluma, California. Craig joins us from Stillwater, Minnesota, a picturesque river town about 30 miles east of Minneapolis, St. Paul. He is here to train with his second guide dog from Guide Dogs for the Blind. Craig is a recently retired professor and now spends most of his time writing and performing music as well as volunteering in various ways around his community. Here you go. Thank you. Well, it's absolutely amazing to be here. Um, I've been here once before. And I have to say, my first guide was just a miracle in my life, and I'm so privileged to have this opportunity again. I know that there's a, uh, the chain of events and people that lie behind this moment is truly humbling and astonishing for the people who stand up here with the guides. But let me tell you a few things about Trusty. <laughs> One of the first things I found out is that he's better looking than me. Uh, <laughs> I have to say that no one in my life has ever stopped me and said, what a handsome boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I learned pretty quickly that he was smarter than me. <laughs> um, and I'm sure my, my instructors would agree that it was probably easier to train Trusty than it was to train me. But, but we figured it out together. And then I figured out that Trusty is Trusty. Um, when you're totally blind and you're cruising down the street with a dog and you're um, at that wonderful pace that they can take you at, you've got to be pretty sure that everything's going to work out. And with Trusty, he has my absolute and total trust. So um, just like my first guide here, the training and the personality of these dogs is, is just amazing. Uh, you know, when you... When you lose your vision, like me over a long period of time, and end up totally blind, it's all about small losses and big losses. You don't have many gains in that process. And then 
when you get a guide dog, it's a gain. It's an enormous gain. Um, when I walk around with a white cane, I feel like I'm crawling. When I walk with Trusty, I feel like I'm flying. And that difference is exhilarating, and it just makes a life so much richer. I want to thank Megan and Lauren, my instructors, Carlos, who trained Stog so well, and the Giacomini family, who gave him his wonderful manners and his great base to grow up with. I promise I will take endless good care of him and let him be a real dog whenever he needs it. <laughs> so thank you. All right. See if I can get through this. <laughs> thank you. This one. All right. Thank you uh, to Guide Dogs for inviting my family to be part of Trusty's next chapter. I'm Nikki, this is Brant, and this is my husband, Tony. Uh, after seeing another student at his high school raising a puppy, Brant asked if he could check out being a raiser. For anyone who's ever raised a teenager, just as I knew at the time, you know how this was going to go. <laughs> and therein started my journey as a co-raiser with Brant. Trusty had some predictable moments and many unpredictable, but one thing I didn't expect was the gift of time and connection he would give me with Brant as we get closer to Brant being recalled into adulthood. <laughs> Watching the bond between Trusty and Brant was amazing. He would get so excited when Brant got home and loved their cuddle time. I was always amazed at how much he enjoyed getting his nails done, but what I think he really enjoyed was sitting in Brant's lap with his full attention. Trusty, from day one, Trusty was confident with a fun personality. He, he wanted so badly to play and interact with our senior pet, but she wasn't interested. It took five weeks of patience and persistence on his part, but he finally won her over. They became fast napping buddies. Our camera's full of fu their funny sleeping positions with each other. His patience and persistence also proved beneficial with his first time puppy raisers. We were all learning together. Of course, our journey would have been a lot harder without the support of our club and our club leaders. Coming home, you always knew you could count on Trusty prancing up to you with his eyes squinted from his smiling so big with a toy in his mouth and his whole body wagging. In quiet moments, it wasn't uncommon for Trusty to come over to hold your hand. As we got to know Trusty, it became obvious to us that he would find a job. He is smart and eager to learn and wants those treats. <laughs> we weren't the only ones who noticed how special he was. I had a very proud moment when we were at the vet, and the vet came out to me and said, you are doing a great job with him. He is so easy to handle and lets me do anything I need to. He is the easiest dog I've seen all year. <laughs> we can't take all the credit for it. That's just Trusty. Getting the call that Trusty was class in class and would graduate today was bittersweet, but knowing that he is going to make Craig's life better helps ease the sadness. With Brant graduating high school, our plan was to be one and done with puppy raising. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> as I reflect back, I equate puppy raising to childbirth. In the moment, it is beautiful, hard, a little painful and a lot of work. You vow never to do it again. <laughs> but as the time passes, you forget about the difficulties and the hard work and only remember the beauty. And you get pregnant again. <laughs> so you never know. You might just see us at another graduation someday. <laughs> Thank you, Craig and Puppy Raisers. Next up, we have Andrew Malarski of Carson City, Nevada, receiving Marcus, a male black lab retriever, raised by Adriana and Aaron Revocaba of <laughs> Pomona, California. I would like to mention that Guide Dogs for the Blind gratefully acknowledges that Andrew Malarski and Marcus are sponsored by Fred and Gail Hardy of Palm Desert, California. <laughs> Andy is receiving his fourth guide dog, and he is looking forward to traveling domestically and internationally with Marcus on grand adventures. Here you are. I 
I'd like to start off by thanking Aaron, Adriana, and Emily for the fantastic job they did in raising Marcus. I'd like to shout out to Fred and Gail Quayle for their contribution. I'd also like to thank the entire staff at Guide Dogs for the Blind for the support and the training that they offer us. A special shout out to Corinne, my, uh, my instructor. She did really hard work in getting us prepared to be where we're at right now. Um, <clears throat> anyone who has a dog, whether it's a service animal or uh, just a pet, knows about the relationship and the bond that you have with that animal. And I feel so very blessed and fortunate to have Marcus in my life. And I'd like to finish by using a quote from one of my favorite movies, Casablanca. Marcus, this looks like the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> Hi, so I just wanted to say that Marcus is the first dog that I've raised, and now he's also the first dog that's graduating. So I really couldn't be any more prouder um, on this day. Um, I did want to say that he's such a good boy. He's always been um, play hard, work hard, and he's such a lovable boy. He's very sweet. And I'm just so proud today. And I just wanted to thank everybody that can get him here today. So not even limited to, of course, my family, my mom, uh, my sister, uh, Emily, who's sitting down, <laughs> um, as well as the GDB team, my puppy club, Diamond Bar, as well as my leaders, Gail and Mary, uh, Dr. Earl, who introduced me to Guide Dogs for the Blind in the first place, um, as well as and everybody who's been in Marcus's life to help him get here from when I was in college or um, anywhere else in life. So I just want to say thank you. And I'm proud that he's going to be a working dog. And I'm happy that he's with you, Andrew. And I hope you guys have many fun adventures together. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we now are going to welcome Leah Martinson of Minneapolis, Minnesota, receiving Rye, a female yellow lab golden cross, raised by Reese Maddock of College Station, Texas, and Sandra Tempera of Lola, Texas. Uh, Rye is Leah's second dog. She had a 13-year gap between dogs and is so happy to be working with a guide again. She has an awesome eight-year-old daughter named Luna. Leah and Luna are so excited to be adding another girl to the family and making their dynamic duo into a powerful trio. They are planning on spending a lot of time in the nature together this summer. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm probably gonna cry and I'm gonna take you guys on a little journey. Um, guide dog training is not for the faint of heart. For the clients, the trainers, the dogs, and all the staff involved, it takes some serious dedication, motivation, determination, discipline, patience, and love. And when we showed up here on our first day and I met my classmates, I was like, oh, I'm spending the next couple of weeks with some old dudes, cool. <laughs> And as you all were able to observe, they are just lovely humans, and it was an honor and privilege to be in class with them. Um, this was quite the ride for me. I was actually matched with a different dog at the beginning of training, and we had something very unexpected come up pretty far into the training process. And I did not think it would be possible to find another dog that was ready and a good match for me, and I was pretty sure I'd be going home without a dog. And Rye is nothing short of a miracle. Um, and I know that the work it took for the staff to make this happen and get us ready to be graduated today is also nothing short of a miracle. 
And I am just so unbelievably impressed by the level of care and support that I received through that experience because it was really difficult emotionally. And I just felt so held and loved and supported and included in the process of the decisions that would directly affect me. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of things that went on behind the scenes that I have no idea about, but I didn't feel any of the stress or challenges that might have been happening behind the scenes to make this happen. Um, I want to give a special thank you to Melanie, our class supervisor. She was an absolute rock star. Rai wants to see mommy number one. <laughs> and then my instructor, Corinne. Both of them worked really hard to help us be ready. Um, and we're going to get a little follow-up training as soon as we get home just to make sure that we're good together. Um, but it was a good match off the bat. When they brought Rye to me, um, they gave us a little time to get to know each other. I sat down on the floor, and she crawled into my lap facing me, put her head over my shoulder, and pulled me into a hug. And she was like, girl, I got you. <laughs> and it's just, it honestly couldn't be more perfect. And I am so unbelievably grateful to everybody that contributes to making this happen from volunteers to staff to donors, and especially our puppy raisers. You guys are amazing. Thank you. My name is Reese. My co-raiser Sandra couldn't be here, so I'm gonna share a little bit from her first. She says, Rye was a joy to raise. She has a big personality that makes you just want to love life. From the beginning, she has been eager to work. She loves to learn and is very focused. She has the energy to go with it too. She loves to run laps in the backyard and then jump in the swimming pool. Rye will be a wonderful guide for Leah. They will be an excellent team, and she's really excited to hear about their adventures. And she wants to say thank you to all the trainers and staff at GDB that made all of this possible. Now my turn. <laughs> so Rye and I actually met on a puppy sit. Um, I didn't start her. She wasn't mine. Um, I had just sent off my first dog to be recalled, and I had only helped to finish him. So he was older, and he was already well-rounded. Rye was newly street legal, and she was the youngest dog I'd handled so far for GDB. I was cautioned that because she was so young and spunky, she could be more than I was used to, especially with me being a brand new razor. It was just uncertain how we would work with each other, and it was all kind of up in the air. Because of all this, the puppy sit was only a week long, and then she proved all of us wrong. The week went so well, and we clicked instantly. My co-raiser, Sandra, well, she wasn't my co-raiser at the time, but she was still out of town for another three to four weeks, and I was asked if I thought I could hold on to Rye for that much longer. Um, I, of course, said yes. There was not a doubt. It didn't take long for me to fall in love with this sweet girl. She's super eager to work, very loving, sweet and cuddly, and she knew what you wanted from her, and she was ready to go and do it. She's such a joy to have on that puppy sit. She was lanky and on the taller side, so she's affectionately known by people who knew her as Little Giraffe and String Bean, amongst many other sweet nicknames. Fast forward a little, Sandra ended up asking me to co-raise Rye with her. Again, I had no problem saying yes. The joy, fun, and absolute bliss of working with Rye never faded. She's the exact same as a puppy. She's so fun. She remained confident in her work, handled every single long day, college class, and any outing of any kind I took her on, as if she had been doing it her whole life. Rye was one of the most amazing dogs I've ever got the privilege of working with. Our bond was more of a best friend type. We frequently got comments on how visibly strong our bond appeared and how in sync we were no matter the distraction. It's so cool to see her now do that with Leah. She was the dog that really made me realize just how much I loved working and training these amazing pups. She made me want to do it forever. Rye is one of the most amazing dogs I know, and to see her doing what she loves most is so rewarding. Rye, you'll always have a special place in my heart, and I'm so proud of you. Leah, I can't wait to see you and Rye conquer the world together. You guys are the most perfect match, and I'm so confident that you guys are going to be excellent, and I'm excited to see what you accomplish. I also want to say thank you to Sandra, because without her, I would have never connected with Rye, and she's the best co-raiser ever. Um, she allowed us to grow together and learn together, and she gave us a lot of freedom and exploration. I'm also so grateful to everyone that's had a hand in Rye's life. She has a lot of aunties, as we call it, back home. 
Um, it was also a bit of a travel to get here today to see her, and I want to thank you to everyone who had a hand in that. There's a lot of people that contributed to me being here today, and I'm forever grateful. Thank you. We also had some pictures sent in by Sandra of Miss Rye that is being portrayed behind us. The first image is of young Rye laying on a blanket with an orange bone looking attentively at the camera. And the second is older Rye posed on a forest path smiling at the camera. All right, so I have the honor of keeping Leah up here and letting you guys know that we have a special performance by Craig and Leah to wrap up the end of this class. Let's give it up for class 1001. <laughs> Because I felt that this work this week wasn't quite intense enough and stretching me outside of my comfort zone, I thought, why not sing in front of people? Because that's not scary at all. <laughs> so I might get a little emotional, and in the words of the American Idol judges, I might get a little pitchy. Please bear with me. <laughs> and this is for Rye. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Must have seen your face before I recognize that voice. Even though we just met, you feel like home. Here I am in this whole new world, and it's you who opened the door. Living from the heart can be scary at start. And I'm guessing you were sent by someone to teach me something new. I was praying for guidance when I found you. And I never thought that I would say this or feel the way I do. But you see, miracles happen if we allow them to. Crazy life, these are crazy times And it's better hand in hand Losing all my thoughts, I surrender plans Mirror, mirror, oh you are Shining light upon Parts of me I have not yet learned to love and I'm guessing you were sent by someone to teach me something new. I was praying for guidance when I found you. And I never thought that I would say this or feel the way I do. But you see, miracles happen if we allow them to. So I want to say thank you for showing up in both chaos and peace, struggle and ease. The greatest gift of all is to be loved unconditionally. So I'm guessing you were sent by someone to teach me something new. I was praying for guidance when I found you and I never thought that I would say this or feel the way I do but you see miracles happen if we allow them to and I'm guessing you were sent by someone to teach me something new I was praying for guidance when I found you. Oh, and I never thought that I would say this or feel the way I do. But you see, 
miracles happen if we allow them to. That was a beautiful performance to wrap up the end of our class 1001. <laughs> I'm going to pass it off to Corinne and Lauren to do a dog demonstration for us. All right. Thank you, Leah. That's a hard act to follow. Now I have to. <laughs> All right. All right. So during training, our dogs learn most of their skills that are involved with guide work through the use of a clicker. So Lauren and I are going to do a demonstration uh, with back chaining, kind of demonstrating the use of a clicker. So clickers mark a behavior that we want the dog to repeat, and it communicates to them that they will be getting a food reward for that behavior. The use of a clicker makes communication consistent and timely. We start by pairing food with the sound of the click, um, and because these dogs love food, that takes less than five minutes for them to, <laughs> to get that connection. <laughs> Once the dog understands that the click means food, we can then pair it with a desired behavior. So for example, for example, when they're doing something like stopping at a curb, we click and they think food. <laughs> and that makes them want to do those behaviors again in anticipation of getting that food reward. So today for our demonstration, we have our instructor, Lauren, working with one of our guide dogs in training, Ceviche. They will be demonstrating how to target, how the target behavior is used by clients. We're gonna be targeting a chair here. So um, and they will be doing it with the back chaining method. So they're going to start at their end goal and then slowly, link by link, increase the distance from the target. They're going to get started by presenting, Lauren's going to present a hand target in front of Ceviche, and when she touches that hand target with her nose, she's going to get a click and a food reward. This gets Ceviche in the targeting mode, and then once she's understanding the game, we're going to add that fist target to the chair. Very nice. <laughs> a little chew break in between there. And then we're going to add some distance by stepping back. And then again, stepping forward and presenting that fist target at that chair. <laughs> I think she's getting into it. So this time we're, she's going to take um, a couple steps back and pick up that handle and introduce her keyword. Chair. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now she's gonna add even more distance, even more steps back. Did he stay forward, find the chair? <laughs> yeah. All right, now for the grand finale, they're gonna be going through these side doors over here, working through the doors, and then finding the chair from that large distance. Did he stay forward, find the chair? Very nice, what a rock star. <laughs> And then to add even more meaning, Lauren takes a seat in that chair, uh, letting Ceviche get the, the reward of, of finding it for her. Very nice. <laughs> All 
All right. Thank you all so much for joining us today. If you're interested in volunteering, joining our staff, or know anyone who would benefit from our services, please visit guidedogs.com. If you would like to make a donation to support our mission, please text the, text the word partnerships to 50155. For viewers at home, we hope to see you soon. And for those that are with us today, uh, please join us next door for some refreshments. Also, our gift shop, which is located at the top of campus, is going to be open uh, for those that are interested in checking out our array of clothes, gifts, and dog toys. Thank you. Thank you.